many of you to saints. Uh, remember when I got saved and Brother Hampton making those trips out to California, bringing the saints from Jackson with it. And, uh, you know, many of my family members, when I got saved, uh, 28th of this month, be 26 years. Uh, many of them thought I was just going to be a fly by night. Or, and, uh, oh, he just, you know, got got a hold of something. And, you know, he won't be around long. He'll be back out there in the world. And, you know, I remember I brought my sister Helen here years ago. Uh, I remember um, praying for my family members, my oldest sister Helen. I brought her here. She got to say, brought her here. Uh, my sister Mary Jo had gotten saved. My brother Larry had gotten to say. Uh, my sister Angela, she didn't really understand it, but I remember just, you know, getting in the car, and you guys know the testimony, we were driving from Long Beach to Ontario three times a week for six years. And all these people that make excuses about going to church and, you know, it's too far. Sister Rhonda and I and my children, when they were little, we fought Los Angeles County traffic. Oh my God. For six years, three times a week, from Long Beach to Ontario, 56 miles one way, 112 round trip. And we did that because there was no standing church of gods in Long Beach. Now keep in mind, Long Beach is the fifth largest city in California. It's about 500,000 people in Long Beach. It's a really large city. But there was no one standing. Brother Hampton came out there a couple times down there in Long Beach and we canvassed the area. And we got a few places to... Uh, uh, run meetings and stuff, you know, very profitable at the times when we were down there. But uh, the thing is, is that, you know, I was very excited about my, you know, of course my wife and I were saved and had my children, but my brother, my brother and my sisters were going to church with me. That, I mean, that was just the joy of my heart back in those days. Your family saying, you know, that they, maybe they're interested in what I have. Maybe they want what I have, you know. And, uh, and you know, it's, it, they just, for some reason, they just didn't understand that to be saved and to really have real, genuine Bible salvation, you have to really start letting some things go. You have to really ask God to help cut some things off. And it was really sad, you know, one by one, the enemy... You know, deceive my family members, and one by one, all of them went back into the world. And uh, and I remember it was in service in Ontario one day, and I looked around, and they weren't there. And the devil said, "You're next." <laughs> and that was that was many many years ago. And I in, in my mind, I'm thinking, "But devil, you didn't save me. You didn't give me the salvation." <laughs> and I remember when I got saved, September 28, 1990, in a cottage meeting in Long Beach, California. God spoke to my heart. God dealt with me in a real way. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was out there in sin. The devil had so messed me up that I knew that if I didn't get saved, when I did, I would not uh, uh, be around much longer. But anyway, I heard the message of truth. And uh, I didn't know what salvation was. And so at the end of the Bible study, the minister said, is there anybody here that wants to be saved? And I raised my hand. I said, yes, I want to be saved. He said, uh, he said, well, just get on your knees and, and I'll pray with you and I'll instruct you. And I remember, this is my testimony, saints, 20, 25 years ago, soon to be 26. I said, Lord, I want to be saved. Yeah. I said, Lord, if you show me how to be saved, show me what it means to be saved. Give me all the grace I need to stay saved. I promise you, Lord, that I'll serve you for the rest of my life. Amen. And I meant that, saints. I meant that. I really did. I meant that. You know, I entered into a covenant. And a covenant is an agreement between two parties. And God told me that I will keep you saved, but you just obey me and do everything I tell you to do, and I'll keep you saved. And I'm still saved today. Praise the Lord. Amen. And have no desire to go back and see it. Especially as wicked as the world is today. There is no way in the world. I mean, 25 years to get my mind the way it is and, and have a clear vision of the battle. Understand this consecration. Understand this truth. And to go back and see it. Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I'm going to stay saved by the grace of God. You pray for me. God has been good to me even this year. God has been good to me. And I appreciate your prayer, saints. You know, uh, Early on in January, uh, I think it was in February, we made a trip down to Columbus, Georgia. 
Brother Hampton uh, preached a few nights, and then I preached. So we kind of uh, worked together down there in Columbus and uh, went back home. And then, lo and behold, we came back to Jackson. I think it was in March. March or April? I'm not quite sure. Was it March, Sister Juanita? Okay, came back again in March. And so now here we are in September. We're back again. We're back again. You know, so I just want to be in the will of God. And I, I, I'm convinced that the saints, I believe this with all my heart, it makes all the difference to be in the right place at the right time. I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. Saints, it makes all the difference in the world when you're in the right place at the right time. It does. I don't want to be out of the will of God. I want to be in God's will. So you pray for me. We thank God for this uh, first night of the revival. Oh, praying and oh. fasting and asking God to help us. You know, because uh, there is definitely a dearth in the land. Oh. Amen. And, and, uh, and, and heaven sent ministers with a clear vision of the church, clear vision of the battle. It's becoming more and more of an endangered species. Yeah, true. And and so we do cover your prayers. And uh, we're in the last the last days. And so you pray for me as the, we deliver what the Lord has laid on our hearts. Amen. So we want to invite your attention to the book of Revelation, the 15th chapter. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Appreciate the host pastor here, Pastor Hampton. I mean, word, words cannot express how much I feel for him and, and the saints here in Jackson. Like I said, I've been coming here for 24 years. And uh, I mean, I just appreciate the saints, the love, all the trips you all have made to California. Many of you have stayed in my home. You know, the, the, uh, uh, just saints, we just appreciate you all. I mean, I, I would be here the rest of the night just giving you my gratitude of how much we love you all. Saints, we really do. When I say that, I mean that from the bottom yes, of my sir. heart. This congregation is very special and near and dear to my heart. And I thank God. And, had a chance to to uh, be mentored and, and grew up. When I first got saved, Brother Hampton's best friend was in the congregation in Ontario, Brother Williams. And I mean, it just you know, just that love and that compassion and coming year after year, year after year. Say, no, I never want to lose those memories. You know what I mean? Amen. I never want to lose Fresh those memories. memories. That, that means a lot to me. Yes, that helped get me established as yes, a new convert. Those trips coming to California helped me establish my roots. When the, when these saints would come from Jackson, I, they would they would they would leave and and, and, and make different stops like, uh, out on the West Coast, and we would always say, "Don't forget about us! Don't forget about us! Stop through Ontario, come down to see us." We would always say, "You guys can't go back to Michigan without coming down to Ontario. Come by and see us." Brother Hampton would always say, "Hey, we gonna go by and see the saints in Ontario." Amen. Amen. There's some saints out there want to be saved. Amen. 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 I, I appreciate that from the depth of my heart. It means a lot. The 15th chapter. Amen. We're going to read the entire chapters only eight verses. Saints, as we go through this 15th chapter, I'm going to take my time, okay? Because this vision that God gave John on the island of Patmos wasn't even 100 years uh, after Christ had left. Wasn't even maybe 90 something years after Christ left. John was on the island of Patmos. And he gave him a vision of the church from Pentecost to the end of time. And there's no way in the world that John could have known what all these symbols were. He was just there and God was giving him a divine revelation of the church of God, what it is and what it's not. And the battles that the church would go through from one period of time to the end. And basically, John was just, as God was revealing this vision to John, he was just writing down or he was pinning the things that God showed him. But there's no way I'm thinking, now Christ could see it because it, it was in the revelation of Christ that was revealed to John. So Christ saw 2016, Christ saw the age we live in, but there's no way John could have seen it, you know what I mean? But Christ saw something. And he revealed it to John. John wrote it down. And I want you to pray for me because, saints, this is my burden. My burden is heavy. And I want to uh, be able to preach, take the liberty to fly through the midst of heaven and preach this gospel the way God gave it to me. All right, Sister Doris, give us the first uh, eight verses. Well, actually, the eight verses. Uh, it's only eight verses, so just give it to us. 
And I saw another sign in heaven. Now this is what he saw. He's, this is, he's, 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 he's on the island of Patmos. And God is revealing some things to him. And this is what he's writing. He said, I saw another sign in heaven. Now obviously, he's not talking about the abode of God where Christ is right now. Because no, no man has ever been up there. But what he's talking about is heavenly places where the church is. Yes, sir. The ecclesiastical heaven. Are you with me? Are you all with me? All right, read. And I saw another sign in heaven. Another sign within the church. Great and marvelous. And it was great and marvelous. It was great and marvelous. Read. Seven angels. Seven angels. Having the seven last plagues. Seven last plagues. For in them. In them. Filled up the wrath of God. And I saw it as it were a sea of glass. A sea of glass, the crystal clear word of God, like a mirror under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Because when the gospel is preached, it needs to be preached crystal clear. So you, it's like a reflection, so you can see yourself. Say, we didn't come here 2,500 miles to play games. We didn't come here 2,500 miles to, you know, just, just to, you know. That's right, brother. To, to, to me. I mean, come on, say to God, we're, we're in a battle. We're That's in right, time brother. here. That's Amen. It, and, this, this, and he said, I saw a sea of glass. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, sea of glass mingle with fire. Yeah. Praise God. So the word has to be preached crystal clear yeah. under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what we need. Yeah. We don't need opinions. That's we right. don't need, amen, my God, amen, uh, 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 a man's ideas. Right. Right. We need a message That's from heaven right, crystal yeah. clear coming God. directly from God, God under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's right, brother. That's what we need. Read. <laughs> and I saw, as it were, a sea a of sea glass. glass. Amen. When they saw Christ, 
Amen. When John saw this uh, uh, a depiction of Christ, the same attributes, Amen. which is nothing more than, than the, the, uh, if you study uh, Exodus 28, you'll see Aaron the high priest That's had right. on a certain, uh, uh, had certain priestly garments Amen. On. Amen. A girdle, ephod. Ephod. And, That's you know, right, All this, okay? Mark it down, brother. All right. Read on. And one of the four beasts. One of the four beasts. Gave unto the seven one of the, angels. the four living creatures, or the redeemed of all ages. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Gave unto the seven angels. Whoa. Seven golden Seven golden vows. Full of the wrath of God. Full of the wrath of God. Who liveth forever, liveth forever and, and ever. ever. And the temple was filled the with smoke. The temple was filled with smoke. From the glory of God. That smoke is a type of glory. Amen. The temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God. And from his and power. And from his power. And no, and no man, man was, was able, able to enter into, to enter the, into the temple to the seven, to the seven plagues, plagues the seven angels were fulfilled. Chap uh, verse number four. We want to take our text from verse number four. Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest. Our thought tonight is when thy judgments are made manifest. Oh my God. When thy judgments <laughs> are made manifest uh, there's a lot of things that were made manifest in the beginning there's a scripture in first john 3 turn it real quick as we lay the foundation first john chapter 3 we're going to define this word we're going to define this word manifest but let me show you that in first john 3 first john 3 it says verse 8 he that committed sin it doesn't matter what your preacher tells you, your family members, uh, relatives, they how long they be Praise God. If you commit sin, you're of the devil. That's, That's right. right. That's right. As simple as that. If you're in sin, you're, you, you're a servant of sin. That's right. Read on. He that committed sin is of the devil. He that commits sin is of, you cannot be, you cannot be sinning and be saved at the same time. There's no such thing as a sinning Christian. You cannot have sin in your life and be saved at the same That's time. That's right. If this church was on fire and the smoke alarms went out, we would exit, we would follow the protocol, we would leave the building, amen, and leave your whatever behind, get out of here, this building is on fire, and if we're out in the parking lot, we are saved from this burning building. Right? Yeah. But if somebody decides, I gotta go get my cell phone, my purse, my wallet, whatever, and you break away and don't, and don't listen to us, and you run back in here to get something, you're no longer saved from the fire, you're back inside this burning building. How in the world can you be saved from sin, amen, and then go back in? That doesn't make sense to me. We don't just go on what to say. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. And he wasn't in heaven. He was never an angel. He wasn't in heaven. I don't know where they got that from. The devil was never in heaven. There's no rebellion in heaven. Heaven is a holy place filled with holy praise. The sin will never be there. Before a person commits sin, they have to Clearly shows or visible, 
easy to understand or recognize. Rather than knowing all your life, you know that this person is doing things that they should be doing. You know that this person is being controlled by the devil. They're not saved. But then all of a sudden, amen, God get a hold of their heart. Yeah. God begins to deal with them. Yeah. Yeah. Conviction sets yeah. in. Yeah. God troubles them. They come and they make their way to an altar of yeah. prayer. Yeah. And they humble themselves. That's right, brother. Amen. Uh, 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 they begin to be honest with themselves and with God. They begin to be honest with their fellow man. Yeah. They cry out to God, amen, for deliverance. Yeah. And their attitude is the same as, as Saul was in Acts chapter 9 and also the Philippian jailer in Acts 16. Their attitude is, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. What will you have me to do to be saved? Show me what I need to do and I'll do it. Yes, yeah. God. They don't come to the altar negotiating. All right, all right. They don't come trying to get a deal. They're not trying to bargain. Can I hold on to this? And they will keep this. Can I let you? No. You really want to be saved. You really want to pay the price. To get a real experience with God. That's it, brother. Real, genuine Bible salvation. That individual prays through and gives everything to God. Praise God. And it is not so much that the minister or the altar worker or the pastor tells the individual that they're saved. That's right. Say, the Holy Ghost got to tell That's you. That's right, brother. Yeah. The Spirit will bear witness to your spirit and let you know you're saved. That's right, brother. And when that individual gets saved, they're willing to let go of everything. They're going home. They got a six-pack of beer and there's five left. They're not negotiating, well, can I drink these other five? And then I'll say, no, no. I've been smoking cigarettes all my life. I just paid X amount of dollars for a carton of cigarettes. I still got three packs of cigarettes that cannot hold up to no, no, no. I was I bought I bought a bag of, of reefers and I still got some weed at home. Can I still hold it? No, you can't do that. When an individual gets saved with real, genuine, conscious salvation, it doesn't matter what it is. And, and there might be some things you don't know that sin, but if you're honest, What's the three keys to salvation? I preached this before. You guys know the three H's. Honesty, humility, and a hunger and thirst for right. If you have those three qualities working in you, and salvation will help you get there, it does not matter. If you really want to be saved, you want to pay the price. You want to pay the price. And brother, when that individual gets saved, my God. My God, everybody's going to know. Yes. Everybody's going to know. And that's what we're saying here. When Christ was made manifest. He was made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. That was his whole purpose of coming here. To, he was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. In you. Amen. Take that spirit out of you. Through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, take that bad spirit out of you and create in you a clean heart, Lord. Amen. And renew a right spirit within you. That's right. To cause you to walk in his steps. Amen. <laughs> and there's a lot of things you don't know, and you don't need to be digging into Revelation right away. You don't need to be, amen, studying about this, that. All you need to know is that, amen, amen, get into the gospel. Of Jesus Christ, amen. come in church, and amen. Be perfect in your church attendance amen. if you can. Stay on your face before God. Establish a real, genuine prayer life before God. Be obedient to the Word of God, God. and little by little, God will begin to reveal things to you. He will show things to you. My God, my Lord. Go back to our text. Sound, brother. Amen. <laughs> so now. Manifest. When thy judgments are made manifest. What is manifest? Able to be seen. You ain't got to go around trying to convince people that you're saved. You don't have to drive around in your car with uh, bumper stickers on your, on your bumper saying I'm a Christian. You don't have to walk around with t-shirts advertising I'm saved, I'm a Christian. You don't have to do all that. If you got an experience with God and, and real genuine Bible salvation is on the inside, your co-workers will know you're saved. Amen. Your family members will know that you're really saved. Yes. Everybody will know. There's something different about this individual. Yes. They're not the same. That's right, brother. My God. 
There was a lady in Long Beach, uh, some of you saints were at my installation service 17 years ago. We had it at the Upland Club in California. And there was a lady, my cousin, we sent invitations to my uh, family on my father's side to come to witness my installation. And, uh, and, and Brother Hampton, and Brother Kelly, and a lot of the saints were there. So my cousin told this lady that was our neighbor in the early 60s. I'm talking about 60. Well, actually, I was born in 58, and she was already our neighbor's. Follow my train of thought. Follow my train of thought. I'm born in 58. She's already our neighbors. She remembered me from a child. She remembered me in my early childhood. She remembered me, I mean, all through the 60s. They were close to our family. She remembered my brother Larry and me terrorizing the neighborhood. They met as young, bad little boys. She remembered that. And my cousin said, Alice. Tony is saved now and he's preaching and he's being installed as a pastor. Would you make the trip to Upland to come? She said, what? <laughs> oh, God, no, wait, wait, wait. Say that again. She said, yeah, my cousin Tony Washington ah. is saved. He's preaching. He's getting ready to be installed as a pastor. Would you come? She said, yeah, I want to come. <laughs> so when Brother Hampton uh, 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 did the, uh, the, gave me the charge, and, 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 and they installed me. They opened it up for visitors in the audience. Is there anybody here that would like to make comments? And Alice got up and made a beeline and came straight up to the front. <laughs> and she said, my name is Alice Simpson. I'm from Long Beach. I grew up next to the Washingtons. I've known them all my life. I'm so proud and I'm so happy to be here, you know, to, to witness this occasion. Because most of you, all you know is Brother Tony being saved. <laughs> oh. <laughs> See, it's good when somebody else can testify. Yeah, that's right, brother. Yeah. She said, all right. you guys know is Brother Tony being saved. But I remember I when remember. he was a little boy. That's right, brother. And she said, I'm so proud. See, that's what salvation is. Amen. That's what if Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Well, we're saying, once that initial work is done, we, we need the judgments of God to be manifested to keep us on that straight and narrow pathway. Right. When we lose the judgments of God, we're going to lose something that's vital. Something that's vital, near and dear. We need the judgments of God. What did Amos say? Give me Amos 7 real quick. I'm a preacher like God gave it to you. Yeah, that's right, brother. Amos 7. Amen. The judgments, I mean, the, the Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Yeah, that's right, brother. To deliver us from sin. And in Amos 7, so we need these judgments, okay? 7-7, seven, 7-7. Seven, seven, seven. Thus he showed me, showed me, and behold, behold, the Lord stood, the Lord stood upon, upon the wall, a wall made by a plumb line, plum line, with a plumb line, with a plumb line in his hand. A plumb line is used ah! to determine whether a wall is straight. Yes. Amen. 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 Read on. And the Lord said, the Lord said, behold, Amos, what seest thou? What seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. A plumb line. Then said, then the Lord, said the Lord, behold, behold, I will set a plumb line. In the midst of my people, Israel, I will not again pass by them anymore. The plumb line is used or determined to keep the wall straight. And God said, I'm going to set the plumb line, which is a line of judgment. He said, I'm going to set it in the midst of my people. And guess what? I'm not going to pass this way no more. Meaning, I'm not going to move it. Amen, sir. I'm not going to move that line. I'm not going to move that line. Because the line, the plumb line is designed to keep the wall straight. And we all as lively stones are building up a spiritual house. And Christ is the cornerstone. So if Christ is the cornerstone, every other stone has to be lined up, synchronized with, with Christ. And in order to keep that wall straight, we need what? The plumb line. We need a line of judgment to keep that. I'm telling you, take the line of judgment away from the church. We are in trouble. Now, there's something that I want to share here. So, in order for thy judgments to be made manifest, you can take notes if you want, write this down. In order for the judgments of God to be made manifest, you have to have someone 
with an anointing from God who knows how to execute the judgment. That's right. That's right. That's right. You got to have somebody with an anointing from God to know how to execute the judgment. See, those of you that play basketball, you lose it by two points. And, and, and you got 10 seconds, 5 seconds left when the coach calls timeout, he draws up a play. And he, he's, th he's thinking, hey man, if you guys do everything I tell you to do, and you go back on the court, if you execute this play, you can, you can win. But everybody got to do their part. That's right, brother. Ooh. In order for the judgments to be made manifest, you got to have somebody that knows how to execute the judgment. And when the judgment is written, which is the word of God, which is amen for the church, That's we right. all have to play a part in making sure that we win. That's right, brother. Ooh. Do we want to win, don't we? That's right. Don't we want to win? Yeah. Who likes being on the winning team? I do. Yeah. Amen. So once again, and not everybody knows how to execute the judgment. My God. Ezekiel 43. Thank you, Jesus. Lord help me. See, once the judgment is taught to you, and the judgments, according to uh, Isaiah 26, 9, it says, when thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. So once the play is written up, once the judgment is written, amen, and you learn how to execute the judgment, then it becomes reciprocal. That's right, brother. See, the church is a body. Right. And there's God never designed it for one person to be over the church of God. That's right, brother. He didn't design it that way. That's right. He never designed for one person to be over the church of God. He, it, it meant we, we, we are to, uh, to be a visible church. That's right, brother. There's different attributes that make up the church. That's Divinity, right. visibility, uh, 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 execution, oneness, unity. Bravo. My God. I mean, I mean, Moses tried to do it by himself when he was wearing himself out, and he needed who was at the home and who wasn't. And, and, and who else? Her. Her. When they held his hands up, Israel was winning. When he got tired, his hands started going down. What happened? You don't think we get tired? You don't think fighting the devil and fighting spirits and my God and amen and stand on our face before God and get the message from God? That's right, brother. Don't you think virtue leads us? Amen. That's right, brother. So that's why we all need each other. This Amen. is a team operation. This is a team. Amen. From the children all the way up to the seniors to help. This is a team operation. My God. Amen. Amen. Bless you, man. Bless you. So, in order for the judgments to be made manifest, you have to have someone with an anointing. Amen. Amen. To know how to execute the judgment from the Sunday school teacher. To the altar worker, the choir, the choir uh, leader. That's right, brother. Everybody. Everybody. Ushers. Amen. The, usher, the, the judgments of God are being preached, and the ushers have to know how to execute the judgments. Praise God. Everybody has to know how to execute the judgments. That's right, brother. Because when the judgments are in your earthen vessel, the inhabitants of the world will learn right. Amen. They'll know how ushers are supposed to conduct themselves. Amen. They'll know how, amen, choir members are to conduct themselves. Amen. Praise God. The children will know, amen, uh, 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 when the judgments are taught around the family altar at home, amen. amen, and they begin to be exposed to it, they'll know how to conduct themselves, amen, amen. And, you know, the same children should be, if the children are in public school, they should be the best children at school. That's right, brother. That's right. Amen. 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 Ezekiel 43. Verse 10. Thou son of man. Son of man. Show the house. Show the house to the house of Israel. That they may, that be, they may be ashamed of their iniquities. And let them measure, let them measure the, the pattern. And if they be, if they be ashamed of all that they have done. Show them the, show them the form of the, of the house. And the fashion, and the fashion thereof. thereof. And the going, the going out, out thereof. And the coming, coming in thereof. And all the forms thereof. All the ordinances thereof. All the forms thereof. Praise God. All the laws thereof. Come in their sight. That they may keep the whole form thereof. And all the ordinances thereof. 
Jesus. And to me, in verse 12, this, this is, is the law of the house. Upon, upon the top of the mountain, the whole living thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Praise God. <laughs>
immersed and going all the way under the water. Amen. Matthew 28. The reason why being baptized in the name of Jesus is five times in the book of Acts. Amen. But the formula for water baptism is Matthew 28. Yes, sir. And if you don't obey the Christ's commandment according to Deuteronomy, you will, you will be cut off. There will be a prophet that will come. It was prophesied in Deuteronomy that there will be a prophet, which is Jesus. And if you do not obey his commandments, you will be cut off. So, so Matthew 28, he said, go ye out in all the world, preach the gospel, and those that are saved, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. That's the formula for water baptism. Oh. So to tell me that I need to be baptized in Jesus' name only, and then I receive the Holy Ghost, brother, you reading a different Bible than I'm reading. <laughs> Oh, 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 blessed Lord. Right. Okay, the ordinances thereof. And all the forms Lord's thereof. Lord's Supper, feet washing, amen, come on. All the laws thereof. All the forms thereof. And all the laws thereof. Uh-huh. And write it in their sight. Uh-huh. That they may keep the whole form thereof. You gotta keep the whole form thereof. The whole, you gotta keep the whole form thereof. And all, all the ordinances, ordinances thereof, and, do and them. then do them. Verse twelve again. This is the law of this the house. This is the law of the house. Upon the top. Upon of the, the top of the mountain. The whole limit. Amen. Thereof. The whole limit thereof. Round right about. Shall be most, shall be most holy. holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. Jeremiah chapter five. So once again, you have to measure the pattern. You have to know what the house is, and be able to show the house to the house. And so, now you can't measure what you can't see. <laughs> you cannot measure what you can't see. You know why? First of all, in the scripture it says, every man's way is right in his own eyes, but God is the way of spirit. That's right, God. And Job said in Job 31, 6, he said, Lord, let me be weighed in an even balance that you may know my integrity. See, there's a, there's a fine line here. That you, we we, we want to be in, right. in a balance, an even balance. That's right, brother. We don't want to be like Ephraim. Uh, he said he was a cake unturned, That's right. burnt on the bottom, my God. and That's right, brother. raw on the top. That's you know, we right. We said something to that effect over in Hosea. So we don't want to be like that, but we want to find a balance. Yeah. Saints, in the church of God, I believe with all my heart when Christ delivered the message to the apostles, amen, and then the Holy Ghost came to, amen, to, uh, 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 to help the church. In her infancy, I believe he had in mind for this church to be balanced. Yes, amen. Amen. Yes, I believe he was teaching a way so that the church can stay away from fanaticism and man rule. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And stay away from compromise and being too amen. 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 But he wanted his church to be right down the middle and be weighed in an even balance. Amen. To be weighed in an even balance. That's right, brother. Amen. amen. And that's why we need the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost, the pastor teaches, the ministry teaches, Sunday school teachers teaches, but I believe it says the Holy Ghost is going to show you some things. That's right, brother. I believe the Holy that's Ghost right. will show you some things. That's right. Tonight, that's the right. The Holy Ghost will show you some things. Yeah. Say, this is not a legalistic thing. Thou shalt not do this, and thou shalt not do that. My God, not my God, have this mercy. Uh -uh. The scripture says in Galatians 6 1, stand fast. And the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. free. Amen. And be not again entangled under the yoke of bondage. Under the law, it was, a, it was a type of bondage because they didn't have the Holy Ghost That's to help right. them. Couldn't do they would sin, couldn't they would have it. sacrifices, the yes, atonement, sir. year after year, That's and they right. would go right back and sin again. Do the same thing. All over again. No. But in the New Testament, we don't have to live like That's that. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah 5.1. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and seek in the broad place. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now and know, and know, and seek in the broad seek place. Seek in the broad place thereof. If ye can find a man, if you can just find somebody, just anybody, find a man. Hmm, listen. If there be any, if there be that any executed, that executed judgment. Seeking the truth. And I will pardon. I said, I'll pardon. No, no, no. He's just looking for somebody. Oh God is just looking for somebody. Thank you. Just to be able to execute the judgment. No. The thought tonight is when thy judgments are made manifest. No. And God is saying here, he said, I'm just looking for somebody that will execute the judgment. That's, that, that, I mean, you might have to go all over. I mean, it's like he said, we got to go all over the broad places. Go all over. 
See if you can find somebody. Just find somebody. Somebody. Somebody that will stay in the gap between the living and the dead. Somebody like Abraham did. Like Abraham did in Genesis 18. For the sake of time, I'm not going to go there. But you know how Abraham interceded in the 18th chapter when uh, he was getting ready to bring judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah. And Abraham interceded. Lord, if you find 50 right this man. Lord, if you find this Lord, if you find this man. Lord, would you spare? Would you spare? Lord, one man interceded. Thank God. Thank God for his mercy. Is there anybody here that's willing to take the out? Take the consecration? To get on their face before God? And be someone that God can really use <coughs> to perpetuate the message. Read it again, 5 1. Run <coughs> to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, and I will pardon. God. There's different types of judgment. There's a, a, a line of judgment that keeps us holy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And according to, I, I quoted it earlier. And write it down if, if you want to study it out yourself. But write this verse down, 26.9 Isaiah. 26.9 Isaiah says, When thy judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. What earth? Your earthen vessel. Yeah, that's right. Paul said we have this treasure in the earthen earth vessel. vessel bro. That's when right. the judgments are in your earthen vessel, you can go on vacation and the pastor don't have to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can take a trip, amen, and, 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 and one of the saints will have to be camped across the street from your house with binoculars. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. When the judgments are in your earthen vessel, man, my God, you're going to live right no matter where you are. Amen. 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 We need the judgments in our own earthen vessel. That's right, brother. We need to preach to us, but we need them in our earthen vessel. So, he said, now, seek in the broad places. If you can find a man, if there be any that execute judgment, that seeketh the truth. And I will pardon. Now, I go. there's different types of judgment. There's that line of judgment that keeps the wall straight. But then, when we look at the Old Testament, there's some principles there too. We need the line of judgment within the church to show us how to handle church matters too. In Deuteronomy chapter number uh, 17. Let's go there real quick. Lord, Lord, Lord. That's the word. Deuteronomy chapter 17. In Deuteronomy chapter 17, starting verse 8. Deuteronomy 17, 8. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment. Wait a minute. If it's a matter that's too hard for us in judgment, because we're, according to the scripture, in Revelation chapter 18, I think it's 10, and then in Revelation 14, I think it's around 6 and 7, uh, it says something to the effect that we are living in the hour of God's judgment. Amen, amen. Amen. We are living in the hour of God's judgment. That's right, brother. Amen. Amen. So here in Deuteronomy, he says, now, if there arise matters too hard for thee in judgment. Now, you know who he's talking to right here. When, 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 when this is written, he's writing this because there were some inferior judges. Amen. There, there, there were uh, inferior judges. Make it plain, brother. And there were some matters that was out of their reach. That's right, brother. That was beyond their capacity. Lord. See, that's why God sets everything in order within the church. That's you know, right. Everybody trying to settle matters within the church. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He didn't design it that way. That's right, brother. He said, read it again, verse 8. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment. All right. Between blood and blood. Blood and blood. Between plea and plea. And plea. Between stroke, stroke and stroke. And stroke. Be in matters, matters of controversy, controversy within, within thy gates, 
Then shalt thou arise, arise. and get thee, get up, thee up into the place, into the place. which the Lord thy God shall choose. All right, we gonna get we gonna we gonna get into that since I might have to make a two part on this because unless you. I, I don't want to wear you out tonight. See, this message is so deep and so burned my heart. There's a lot in here. And I want you to pay, I want you to pay close attention to what we're saying. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment. In other words, he's speaking to inferior judges because in, 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 you know, during this time they had judges that would judge matters. If there's a matter that's too hard for thee in judgment. Amen. Inferior judges. You know, in other words, it's out of and saints, really, when you think about it, we should know our own capability and our own capacity. Amen, brother. We should know and be honest with ourselves and with God and know what our capability is. That's right, brother. Make it plain. And know what your capacity is. That's right, brother. Everybody don't have the same capacity. <laughs> and they did. When, when Philip went down to Samaria and preached the gospel, they were joining the city. Then when he went back to Jerusalem, why did he go get the heavy hitters and got the apostles? Oh, Philip preached the gospel. They were joy in the city. When he went down to Jerusalem and got uh, 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 some of the apostles and said, Come on, go down here. Some people got saved down here. And when they went down there, so, so, so we all must be pure. Purity is an absolute must in the church of God. But power is a barrel. Everybody don't have the same power. That's right, Everybody right. don't have the same capacity. Everybody don't have the same anointing. That's right, Are you all following? Yeah. Yeah. If there arise matters of controversy, that's too hard. Yes. Verse 8 again. If there arise a matter too hard for thee in judgment, it's too hard for the injustice because you don't have the capacity to deal with it. You don't have the capability to deal with it. Crazy. At this moment, now, later on, through consecration, a deeper work of God, a greater anointing, you can get there. But for right now, know your capability. Know what your capacity is. Know, what your, know where your place in the body of Christ is. My Lord. He gave some what? Apostles, Apostles some prophets, That's some right. evangelists, That's some right. teachers. Yeah, all right, brother. For what? Yeah, the work of the The perfecting of the saints. That's right. Everybody got a different capacity. Everybody has a different anointing. Read on, Sister Doris, so if there is a rise of matter too hard for thee in judgment, between blood and blood, blood and blood, between plea and plea, plea and plea, between stroke, stroke and stroke, and stroke between stroke matters of controversy, matters of controversy, within thy, within gates, thy gates, then shalt thou arise and get thee up, get thee up into, into the, the place, place which the Lord thy God shall choose. Read, and thou shalt come unto the priest, the Levites, hmm. and the, unto the judge, unto the judge that shall be in those in days, those days. And, inquire. and inquire, and they shall show they will thee. Show they're going to do what? They shall show now the place where God showed you to go was the Sanhedrin court in the Old Testament. Oh but in the New Testament, you know the place where God showed you to go? Yeah. <laughs> you know your place before God. Get on the altar. Get a revelation from God. Let God show you. That's right, brother. Read. And inquire. Inquire. And they shall show, they shall show thee the sentence of judgment. Read. And thou shalt do according to the sentence. You have to do according to the sentence. Amen. Which they of that place which the Lord shall show thee. Shall choose and sh show thee. thee. Okay, shall choose. Choose shall be shall be. And thou shalt observe to do according to all that they inform thee. Read on. According to the sentence of the law. According to the sentence of the law. Which they shall teach thee. Uh -huh. And according to thy judgment, which they shall tell thee. Uh -huh. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt do. Thou shalt not decline thou shalt not from the sentence Amen. which they shall show thee. Thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall show thee. To the right, to the right hand, hand, nor to the left. Or to the left. 
And the man that man will do presumptuously, presumptuously and will not and will hearken not unto the hearken unto that stand to minister there before the Lord thy God, there before the Lord thy God, or unto the judge, or to the judge even that man shall die. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear, and, and do no more presumptuously. In other words, we can't play with the Holy Ghost because if you do, you're in contempt of court. <laughs> Once the sentence is pronounced and you act on a pretense of I know better, uh, I know more than you know. Now God ordained it this way. Because sometimes there's matters of controversy that's too hard for us to judge. So God ordained it to take it to a man. And this blood and blood, let's break that down. If there arises matters too hard for me in judgment between blood and blood. In other words, in the Old Testament, there was the six cities of ref refuge. And there was the avenger of blood. That's right, brother. That was after you. So if you could get to that city of refuge before the avenger that's of blood. That's right, you know, that's right. And there was safety. Come on, okay, bro. so so this blood is blood, blood and blood. If a man is guilty of shedding innocent blood or not, okay. Also, plea and plea. What does that mean? The plaintiff on one side, okay, and the defendant on the other. Plea against plea. I got a matter against that's you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Brother. You know, the plaintiff on one side and the other person. On, I got a I got a problem with you, brother. My brother heard it. All right. We can't get it together ourselves, so we got to we got to take it to judgment. Yeah, that's right, brother. It's a controversy, you know, and it's just we can't get it worked out. It's just something we we can't get we can't come to a conclusion on. That's it. right. Stroke and stroke, which just means a blow or wound which one man receives from another, or assault or be, or battery, it's assault battery. Yes, it is. So that's what that's talking about. That's what it is. That's These are matters is. of controversy. That's right, brother. Blood against blood. Plea against plea. Stroke against stroke. So, he said now, we have, uh, we have to do according to the sentence. That's the, 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 the duty of the citizens or the duty of the church of God, the saints, is when the sentence is pronounced, we have to do it. And we got to do it. According to verse 11, according to the sentence of the law, which they shall teach thee, and according to the judgment, which they shall tell thee, thou shalt do. Is that what it says? Yeah. Verse 11, yeah. thou shalt not decline from the sentence, which they shall show thee, to the right hand or to the left. Verse 12, a man that will do presumptuously, take matters in their own hand and just go do whatever you want to do. Oh God, oh God. You know, it was a time, historically speaking, when a person got saved, amen, and, and God added them to the church, they knew what they needed to do to be saved. Yeah, that's right, brother. But now it seems like we're living in a day and age now where everybody got their own brand of salvation. Yeah, that's right. That's everybody, right. everybody just making up salvation as they go. You got your, you got your way to get to heaven. I got my way to get to heaven. Right, you got your standards. I got my standards. I mean, everybody got their own brand of salvation. That's right. That's right. That's right. And that brings confusion. That's right, brother. That's right. Right. Ezekiel 22, we prepare for all the calls. When the judgments are made manifest, when the judgments are in our earth and vessel, when we when we're when we're we, we uh, put ourselves in a position where we can be instructed. God can teach us, He can help us. And show us. And so, when thy judgments are made manifest, in Ezekiel 22. So it takes someone, in order for the judgments to be made manifest, you have to have someone with an anointing from God who knows how to execute the judgment. And so in Ezekiel 22, Uh, as we prepare for altar call, verse 23. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto her, 
Thou art the land that Thou is not the land that is not cleansed. Nor rained upon in the day of indignation. This is a conspiracy. There is a conspiracy of her prophets, of her prophets in, the midst in the midst thereof. Like a roaring lion. The treasure and precious, and precious things. Uh, they have made her. They have made her many widows. In the midst thereof. And saying there are some treasures and precious things within the church of God that right are ancient landmarks, and we're not to remove those landmarks. There's some precious things in the church of God, and we're not to remove those stakes are so deep, and we're not to remove, Amen. Those landmarks they were put there by our forefathers. Yes. Yes. That made the church of God what it is today. We come along later and, and, and man, generation comes, generation goes. Generation comes, generation goes. And we come along and we want to move those landmarks. We want to move those landmarks. You can't do that. Leave the landmarks alone. Thank God, brother. Read. And they have taken the treasure, treasure and precious, precious things. things. They have made her, made her many widows in the midst thereof. Verse 26, read. Her priests her priest have violated my law. Now we know what the law is because we read it in uh, Ezekiel 43, 12. This is the law of the house and the house all round about her. She must be what? Most holy. The law of God is she must be most holy. So these priests... According to what the scripture said, I'm just reading from the King James Bible. <laughs> Her priests have, Her priests violated, have violated, my violated my law and have profaned, profaned my holy thing. They have put, no, put no difference between, between the holy and, and profane. Neither, Neither have, have they shown difference between the unclean and the clean. And have they have hid their eyes, hid their eyes from the Sabbath. I am profane among them. Read. Her princes, Her princes in, in the midst thereof are like, are like wolves raving the prey. To shed blood, shed blood and to destroy souls. Destroy souls. To get this, get this out of the game. And a prophet Her prophets have dogged in untempered mortar. You guys know what untempered mortar is? Yes. Well, we know in the natural what it is, but you know in the spiritual what it is? False doctrine. Because when you brick layer, you need that mortar. That, you know, Amen, to brother. Men or whatever to keep the bricks. You know, That's right. Bricks, you know what I mean? But in the New Testament, untempered martyr is false doctrine. Oh, Read it again. Read it again. And her prophets have dogged with untempered martyr. And as a matter of fact, if you don't believe me, look to your right. You got a Thompson chain Bible. If you look to the right, you see the side on it says false doctrine. <laughs> That's what it says. That's what it says. False prophet. That's what it says. That's what it says. Amen. Read it again, sister. And her, her prophets. Prophet. Starting to wind down, but notice what he says here in verse 30. 
And I sought for, I a, man sought for a man among them, among them that should that make, should up, make the up the hedge and stand in the gap out. for me for the land. And before me in the land, that I should not, that destroy, I should not destroy it. But I found none. Man, I couldn't, I couldn't find nobody. I couldn't find nobody. I couldn't find nobody. In this last day, we're winding down to the end of time, and God is speaking the land over. Just see if He can find somebody that will execute judgment. Yeah. See if He can find somebody that will stand yeah. this truth. Somebody that will, will, will safeguard the integrity of this gospel. Somebody that will earnestly and diligently continue for the faith. Yeah, that's right, the liberty to say, I'm just looking for somebody that would do that. I'm just looking for somebody, anybody. Right. And what's the last verse say? Therefore have I poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way have I recompensed upon their heads, saith the Lord God. This is the first night, the first part of the message, and there's much more to come, but we don't want to weary you. I know many of you work today, and you've been on the highway, and you want to get some rest and stuff. Saints, you on what you heard tonight, God spoke, and there's more to come. Amen. But when thy judgments are made manifest, Praise God. the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. When thy judgment, remember now, Christ was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Let's, let's tie that in. Christ came to destroy. He was manifested. That's right, yeah. brother. So everybody can see it. So remember in our text, it says now, when the judgments were made manifest, he, saw, he said, John said, he saw the temple of the tabernacle in heaven open. open. Amen. And remember what I said, what that meant? That means that the church of God is brought out into full view. Praise God. So the judgments of God will produce an open temple, or in other words, the church of God brought out into full view. Praise because the same thing the sixth seal, when you told people you were saved, and they said, well, where do you go to church? And they said, church of God, they knew what that meant. That's right. Man. You know? yes. so, I mean, it was just one. Now, of course, yes. D.S. Warner and some of the others came out of different groups. But for the most part, that message was oh. out of my people. Right. And when you when you came out of, of Babylon, you came to Mount Zion or the Church of God. You knew what that meant. That's Ooh. right, brother. You already knew what that meant. That's right, brother. <laughs> oh. Once again, God has got to filter through all of this. Amen. And keep the, the line straight. Amen. Keep the church on line. Amen. So she don't deviate and have a remnant. Amen. That he can come back for. Amen. That have occupied. He said occupy until I return. Uh, amen. That have not deviated. Have not moved the ancient landmarks. Amen. That is holding the line. The front line. Right in the midst of this church. Have not deviated one iota. Preaching the purity of the gospel. Praise God. Safeguarding the integrity of the gospel. Praise God. And that's the remedy he's coming back for. Yes. Shall we stand? If you want to pray tonight? Oh. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. We'll pray with you. Are the judgments being made manifest in your holy 